internet, I'm Funky Monkey with another untold tale from the Marvelous Legends. So, remember Civil War? When Spider-Man turned up out of the blue? Apparently he'd been around for a while. Now by this point, his origin's almost as folkloric as Superman's. You know, nerdy teen, radioactive spider, suddenly hero. But that's not all that today's untold legend deals with. <laughs> Released in 2017, Spider-Man Homecoming is the MCU Spidey's biggest adventure to date. After a German excursion, teenage vigilante Peter Parker stumbles onto a crime ring which stretches all the way back to the Battle of New York. And as if that wasn't enough, the true identity of the ringleader will shock you. This movie also introduces the organisation Damage Control, which answers the question about how all the destruction around superhero battles gets cleaned up so quickly. So grab your web shooters, and keep a weather eye for Tony Stark on the horizon, as we swing into action and witness the homecoming of an all-new... Spider-Man! It all changed after the Battle of New York. But not enough for Adrian Toomes and his crew. Stark Industries and the US government decided to pool their resources for the cleaning up of extraordinary damage, leading to a new Federal Department of Damage Control, who are taking over the Battle of New York cleanup. And as you might expect, this doesn't sit well with Toombs and his crew, so rather than turn over the Chaitari remains, they kept and adapted their alien spoils. It's another busy day for our hero, Peter Parker in more ways than just school. Yeah, we, we don't get the origin in this one either. By this point it's been taken as red, probably because they don't want to explain how the spider that bit Peter got its power. The plot kicks in when a gang hit a bank, with suspiciously advanced technology, but Happy Hogan has bigger things to worry about, like the move to Avengers Compound. Yes, Tony is moving out of his Manhattan skyscraper and putting an end to the dream of the Avengers. Sad, really. But time heals. But it's hard to keep a secret. And harder still for Ned. Though it does score our hero an invite to a fancy house party. But crime doesn't stop to party. Enter Spider-Man. To a black market super weapon deal. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. And draws the attention of the Vulture which also draws Tony Stark's attention. The last thing Tony Stark needs is another him running around, so he suggests that Parker drop this investigation, which also goes about as well as you'd expect. But the Vulture doesn't abide slip-ups, and sends his minions to recover a lost weapon, which is all the opening our hero needs to slip a tracker on them, and head out to Washington DC. Peter had to quit the academic decathlon team because of his Spider-Man duties. But the academic decathlon coach is a forgiving sort, and welcomes our hero once more into the fold with open arms. <laughs> Blind trust can be a weakness in the old spy game. Ask me how I know! <laughs> but it's a lonely life being Spider-Man. Until we meet the suit's AI. And Spider-Man catches the vulture in the act which again, goes about as well as you'd expect, and strands our hero in the damage control vaults. At least until the next morning, when the recovered tech becomes a problem. The confiscated weapon from the deal had an explosive core, but that core remained inert until exposed to radiation, and guess what happens when you go into a monument in America? Your stuff gets x-rayed. Suddenly the weapon core became a bomb, capable of enormous destruction. That can't be good. Spider-Man swings to the rescue. <gasps> Slick! <laughs> Consequences drop on our hero. Until Peter decides that Spider-Man is more important. And after a semi-successful interrogation, our hero heads for the Staten Island Ferry, and almost stops the deal. Unfortunately, and unbeknownst to our hero, the FBI are way ahead of him, and were waiting to bust the Vulture's gang. But the Vulture won't be denied, and disarming him only makes things worse. 
enter Iron Man to clean up. And dress down. Yes, it was Tony that tipped off the FBI about the Vulture's gang. He reckoned that professional law enforcers and crime stoppers could do what a kid in a spider suit could not, even if it was a Stark maid spider suit. And it wouldn't be such a bad life, being an ordinary kid. He even manages to get a date for the homecoming dance. But just look who turns out to be her father. And he advises our hero not to intervene. Because tonight's the big one. The last of the old Stark tech is being moved out of the tower to the new upstate Avengers compound. And they're flying a high altitude jet, taking no chances with the roads. Which isn't such a bad idea if you didn't already know about the Vulture. But our hero's conscience overwhelms him, and he sets out, without a plan, without a hope, and with barely a homemade stitched together suit. Toombs tries one last time to convince our hero that he's not such a bad guy, and brings his warehouse down on our hero, which once again goes about as well as you'd expect. And so, it's homemade Spider-Man versus the villainous Vulture to protect a precious cargo from the clutches of the black market. Our hero fights valiantly, but the Vulture is determined to claim his spoils, which almost spoils the plane. But Spider-Man is a hero, and won't leave the Vulture to die. All of which means that Elizabeth Toomes the girl that Peter had been crushing on the whole movie, will have to make a new life somewhere else, leaving our hapless hero alone once more. Such are the perils of being Spider-Man, I suppose. Though it does come with some perks. But our friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man isn't quite ready for the Avengers, and so our movie ends with our favourite webhead back in Queens with the first Stark suit. But oh dear! What the f- So that was Spider-Man Homecoming. And actually, I think that this one's a tale worth telling. This one's hard going for me, because the Vulture's gang had a bit of a point. The same people who make the messes are now making more money cleaning it up? Not cool but even less cool that they turned that into a black market for crooks and thugs. Still, I can see echoes of Iron Man's first adventure here, where Tony Stark fought against black market dealings with his own weapons. But let's get to the performances, and Tom Holland really sells the quick wit of Spider-Man and the awkwardness of Peter Parker, though he is somewhat lacking in Tobey Maguire's grim determination. And our villain, Michael Keaton, is every inch the blue-collar mob boss. The everyman that got lost somewhere along the way. Not much to say though about the supporting cast. Jacob Batalan's Ned is a nerdy second to our hero. Not quite as witty, not quite as interesting, but a solid, dependable friend at least. And of course, Robert Downey Stark, whose shadow falls long over this story. But he is right, the suit doesn't make the hero. The hero makes the suit, and the flow of the movie is straightforward enough. We spend a little time with the villains, just to see what they're up to, but mostly it's awkward high school antics, and neophyte Spider-Man learning the ropes of heroing. But this movie is heavily awkward. I hesitate to use the word cringe as an adjective here, because for the most part it's a romp. But I could feel the isolation in doing what's right, rather than doing what would make Peter Parker the coolest kid in his nerdy midtown school. I felt every moment that he tried to cover his secret identity, and doubly so in the moments that he failed. So is it a good movie? Yes. Is it a proper introduction to the character in this universe? Yes. Would I recommend it? Yes. The Teenage Wall Crawler's Great Adventure is a tale worth telling. I've been Funky Monkey inviting you to join me next week as we skip ahead a little and discover what the Hulk did next and, crucially, how Thor and Loki brought about Ragnarok. See you there!